Apart from increasing aperture size, shooting an LRGB with monochrome camera is the fastest way to gather information, or capture photons. Now, for those who may be unfamiliar with this topic, among astrophotographers shooting an RGB refers to shooting with a monochrome camera using red, green, and blue filters to produce three renditions of monochrome images, one favoring red information, one favoring green information, and one favoring blue information. We can then take those three versions of monochrome images using those red, green, and blue filters and combine them to produce a full color image. It might seem at first glance odd to create a color image this way, but our eyes actually work somewhat similarly. Photoreceptors in our eyes are sensitive to different frequencies of light, sending slightly different renditions of monochrome information into our brains, which then combine that information to produce a color perception of the world. And shooting RGB on a monochrome camera somewhat emulates this process. One-shot color cameras also produce color images this way. They actually have monochrome sensors. And over those sensors is a thing called a bare matrix, comprised of millions of tiny red, green, and blue filters about the size of living cells. Light passes through those tiny filters, providing three different renditions of monochrome information from an object which is combined in camera to make a color image. But whether shooting RGB with a monochrome camera or with a one-shot color camera, at all times, the light is filtered, and this creates inefficiency in collecting photons. To keep the discussion simple, let's focus on monochrome cameras. If I was shooting RGB with a monochrome camera and I had the red filter over the camera, then green and blue frequencies are being filtered. Green and blue range information is still getting through, but not as much. When I switch to the green filter, red and blue information is being filtered. And of course, when I switch to the blue filter, red and green information is being filtered. Shooting with RGB filters can create lovely color images, but the problem is, at all times, frequencies of light are being filtered, which means essentially at all times a degree of information is being strained away from the image. In other words, when shooting an RGB through any of the filters, a monochrome camera sensor is not able to gather information nearly as efficiently as it could. But monochrome cameras offer us an interesting alternative. One can shoot through a luminance filter. A luminance filter allows all the visible light ranges to pass, but typically will filter out ultraviolet and infrared light which can create problems such as focusing issues. But by allowing all the visible light information to pass, information can be gathered on a monochrome camera using a luminance filter much more quickly. In fact, a full f-stop quicker. Or in other words, when shooting through a luminance filter on a monochrome camera, the monochrome sensor is able to gather information twice as fast as it can gather information when R, G, and B filters are used. This is a significant efficiency benefit. Allow me to illustrate. A couple months ago, I imaged the Flame Nebula using a 203mm aperture schmidt cassegrain telescope set for 1280mm of focal length. At the end of the image train was a Player One Ares M camera, a monochrome camera using the very reliable, even exceptional, Sony IMX 533 sensor. I say exceptional because this camera sensor is well known for its successful use in astrophotography. I was able to gather information over two nights. There were moonless nights, but partly cloudy, so I wasn't able to take advantage of each full night. During that time, I was able to gather 184 minutes of luminance information and 136 minutes of R, G, and B information. What I'm going to do is illustrate for you how powerful it is to gather information through the luminance filter. Of course, we won't get beautiful colors shooting through the luminance filter, but what we will get is amazing detail. To make this comparison apples to apples, I'm going to stack all 136 minutes of the RGB information and only stack 136 minutes of the luminance information. I stack the luminance image first. Let's prepare it. I'm just going to run the blur exterminator on it, extract the stars, use my evolved method to stretch the histogram, run the noise exterminator on the image, and then add the stars back. Then I'm going to take the three stacked R, G, and B masters do the exact same minimal developing process on them, and then combine the three channels using the color combination tool to produce a full color image. This developing yields two images, the luminance image on the left and the R, G, and B information on the right. Nearly the exact same developmental procedures have been applied to both images, with the exception, of course, that the channel combination tool had to be run on the RGB information to derive a full color image. Let's take a moment to study these two images. They're both dim and the contrast is low, but 
that's a normal part of the developing process. There's a lot that still has to be done with these images. But what we see immediately is that the RGB image on the right has the beginnings of striking color in it, which we would expect from the Flame Nebula. It's a beautiful nebula. Very striking, the way it looks like a, a campfire sitting over logs. But the 136 minutes of integration through a fairly wide aperture telescope, while it gives us good color, only gives us okay detail. And I say only okay, because while the luminance image on the left lacks the color, it makes up for it in spades with detail capturing information which can reveal subtle variations of light and shadow. And especially detail, a form of high-frequency information, is what luminance filters excel at. Think of it like this. Putting a luminance filter in front of a monochrome camera sensor is like taking away its limitations. That sensor is now free to capture all visible light to the best of its ability, and it becomes an information-gathering beast. Detail and fine detail, which are the forms of information that take the longest time to capture, can be captured quickly and very efficiently. To better illustrate this, let's zoom in and take a look. In the center is the ebony stem of the flame. In the RGB image, we have a beautiful reddish halo around that ebony stem, indicating a change in the nature of the materials in that region of the nebula. And in the luminance image, this change in materials toward the center is revealed by a change in brightness just around the stem. Though, of course, the change is not as obvious as what we can see in the color image. That's the advantage of color information. It allows our eyes to pick out subtle variations like that. But, zoomed in like this, we can also immediately see how much more detailed the luminance image is. Lines that are soft in the color image, like strokes of a broad painter's brush, are sharp, crisp, and finely detailed in the luminance image as if an artist has carefully etched them in. The difference is not subtle either. It is immediately obvious how superior the luminance image's detail is. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the branch extending to the left of the stem. Zooming in like this reveals the points even further. While the obvious advantage of the color image is that color is captured, and that reveals probable changes in the types of the material as we move closer toward the center of the stem of the flame nebula. The fine detail in the color image is quite simply blurry compared to the detail in the luminance image. The detail in the luminance image is sharp, as if it's been etched. Whereas the fine detail in the color image is fuzzy, not to be confused with blurry, but almost as if it's been airbrushed in. And there are places, such as the upper left, and between the main part of the stem and the extension of the left branch, where the color image, compared to the luminance image, looks like the detail has been brushed in and then softened as if an artist painted the information there and then lightly smudged it with his finger. That's a common technique, by the way, among artists working in charcoal or with pencils. You draw something in and then draw your finger over the area to slightly soften it up. We'll move to another part of the image now and you're going to see the same story. In fact, you're going to see the same story everywhere we look in the image. The detail is going to be much sharper every single time in the luminous image without exception. And this is because the sensor of a monochrome camera when using a luminance filter can capture information twice as fast or a full f-stop faster than information can be captured through RGB filters. And this also applies to color cameras. A monochrome camera using a luminance filter can capture information twice as fast as a one-shot color camera. Now, with more integration time, color images, whether shot in RGB or with a one-shot color camera, will become sharper. But that is the heart of the issue too. Astrophotographers are keenly aware that clear, moonless nights of excellent seeing conditions are rare and precious, and being able to make the best use of such nights is crucial. So it is important to make the best possible use of such nights. How does one do that? The single most efficient way to do so is to shoot in RGB and luminance. Then, all that fine detail information captured in the luminance image can be added to the RGB image through the magic of compositing, like this. Let's zoom out now and take a look at the entire image. As you can see, combining the luminance to the RGB gives us greatly increased sharpness of detail and the benefit of all that beautiful color. This full range of information can then be developed out to yield a highly detailed and richly colored image, like this. And this is why I almost always shoot in LRGB. It is the most efficient way to gather the most information possible from any target during those rare perfect nights. Now, I know an inevitable question is going to be, what is my L to RGB ratio? In short, 
50-50, I shoot half luminance and half an RGB. And to be more particular, I shoot 60 minutes on luminance, then 20 minutes on red, 20 minutes on green, and 20 minutes on blue. And then the sequence repeats again throughout the entire night. 60 minutes of luminance, 20 minutes red, 20 minutes green, 20 minutes blue. Thus, in each two-hour increment, I am able to gather a good amount of color information and lots of fine detail information. In fact, using this strategy, in each two-hour increment, I am able to gather 150% as much fine detail information as I could gather were I to shoot in RGB only. Imagine I have a good clear night where I can gather eight hours worth of integration. I get four hours of color information and four hours of luminance information. However, that four hours of luminance integration captures as much fine detail as would eight hours of RGB integration. Compared to shooting with a color camera or with RGB filters on a mono camera, that's like a free 50% integration bonus on fine detail. It's almost like creating something out of nothing, isn't it? Like magic. Maybe Einstein was wrong when he said matter and energy cannot be created nor destroyed. No, that's not it. In this case, the magic is simply that shooting an LRGB is much more efficient than just shooting an RGB. And that's why I think I can confidently say that if your goal is to produce detail and color-rich images, and you have dark skies, then you should be shooting an LRGB. To put it simply, it's going to get you the information that you need to make a great image faster. Well, I hope that helps and provides some useful information for you. If you have any thoughts, observations, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I used to try to get back to everybody within a day, but the channel's getting pretty big now and I'm falling a bit behind, but I will get back to you. Now, get out there and shoot that ever-captivating sky.